morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. <laughs> See, almost everything taken and uh, people see, sitting in everywhere. I think Atlas was like, why are you standing next to me? Because I was coming around the side there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a beautiful, beautiful day out for this. We say Easter. Easter's been watered down so much by our society, but happy Resurrection Day, because that's what we're yes. truly celebrating Amen. today. Uh, as we get started this morning, I'm going to turn on my microphone so everybody online can hear me now. There you go. <laughs> Those of you that are online watching, welcome as well. Uh, just some announcements before we get started with the service this morning. Uh, number one, this is one of our special services. Uh, about three times a year, Good Friday, uh, four, Ash Wednesday, Good Friday, Easter and Christmas, Mark and I uh, both give the message. We join together up here to do the message, which is uh, unique. Uh, I don't know of many churches that do that, if any. So um, just so that those of you that might be listening are curious as to why we're back and forth up here. Um, this Wednesday night, we're going to be closing out our study uh, from Max Lucado, in the footsteps of the Savior with how to follow Jesus when you need grace. And I'm really ready for this one because uh, with everything that's been going on the last week or so, I think I need a little grace. <laughs> I need to give myself a little grace. Uh, so we invite you to join us. That'll be 7 o'clock right here uh, in this space, and we'll have a video. I believe it's about the 20, 21 minute video of teaching from Max, and then we will discuss. And then we go to a time of prayer. This is the beauty of our Wednesday nights. We come together corporately. We have a, we have a roughly four page uh, printout of prayers that we pray over people. And at the top of that list is a list of what, 30 some people, I think, that we're praying that either they come into a relationship with Jesus because they don't have one, or that they have a renewed relationship with their Savior because they have had something happen, a church hurt or family hurt that has drawn them away. Then coming up very quickly, because you know this is less than a month away, we have uh, the first weekend in May. Um, Guys, the meal will not change much from what it was this morning. Uh, for those of you that weren't here, if you look over here to my left, your right, you'll see it's kind of turned on its side now, but we've got a griddle there that we make pancakes and sausage, and um, it gets, you know, anybody that wants to come. I, I'm even thinking maybe, if, well, we'll have to figure out how we're going to take care of the women and make a breakfast for them sometime. Yeah. Um, then that evening, uh, at seven at six o'clock, we will be having our movie night. So it doesn't have a name up here yet. We keep hoping that Jesus Revolution will come out of the theater so that we can actually show it. But until it does, they were only expecting a couple, two, three weeks maybe on that thing, and it just exploded. And so. Uh, as soon as it's available, we do have licensing to go ahead and show it, so we're looking forward to that. In the meantime, we'll be discussing what our next movie is, so keep an eye out on our webpage, Facebook, Instagram uh, for that announcement. And then the week following on, uh, on May 13th, we will be having the May uh, Orange Track races. Um, for those of you who don't know what that is, that track right there is 42 feet long. It starts by the door to the kitchen there and ends right about where Stephen's sitting. <laughs> and it's four lanes with a um, electronic finish line and we race seats and we actually had more cars than that. Uh, mm -hmm. That was just, that's just one table, but we, that table actually had more cars on it than mm -hmm. that even this past uh, Saturday, which was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And we had a great day yesterday racing. With that, that's, just calm our hearts and settle back and settle down and go to a word of prayer. Gracious and loving Father, we come before you this Resurrection Sunday. Father, on Good Friday, we, we mourn the, the loss of your son, but the thing that we know that your, your people didn't know then was Sunday was coming. And Father, we just thank you that Jesus took our sins upon himself. He took them all to the cross and 
allowed himself to be nailed to the cross, dying a horrible death, a painful death, a death where he would overcome our not only our sin, but death as well. And that today we can celebrate the fact that he is risen. Father, we thank you for this, this gift that you have given us. Father, we pray for those who do not know you. We pray for those who have a strained relationship, that are estranged from you. We pray for those that have walked away from you, Father. We pray for a revival and a repentance, that people would turn back to you, Father. And that this message, as it goes out into the sanctuary here and then out to all the world, as we broadcast this online, that your message would be heard. And whether it's our church here, Grace Street Church, Father, or any other Bible-believing church, Father, we pray that your message would be preached to the world and that people would turn back to you, Father. Let us see a revival, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our call to worship this morning comes from Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 5. It says, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Can you imagine what that will be like? You know, it's, it's so easy to, uh, we think of death in this a sorrowful time and we, we don't like seeing people leave us. But when we know where they're going, I was telling a couple people this morning, I pulled my parents up heart separately and said, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? I was I was adamant. I wanted to know. And they said yes. So I know that just as Christ was raised from the dead and is now in the glory of the Father, they are now too on this Easter, sitting in the presence of God with their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, overcoming death. Well, on Good Friday, we had our Good Friday service in here, and there was a big, long cross up the middle here. And we took something that we wanted to give over, that we wanted out of our lives, that we turned over to Christ, and we nailed it to the cross, literally. So as we went through Good Friday, and, and Christ was nailed to the cross, and was hanging on the cross, we hung whatever we wanted to give up to God at that point. It's called the Tenebrae Service. And we took those, and, and they got shredded up into fine powder uh, when I got home. And see, once that's done, it's done. You gave it over to God, and God, by his prayer and petition, he tells us by his word, that he will answer those prayers. He will lift that burden off of you. And that is an awesome, awesome thing. So the bad news of Friday was Christ died on the cross. But it's also great news. Because that paved the way for our salvation. Because this morning, he got up. Christ arose from the grave. Hallelujah. Boy, you guys are just kind of hungry. I know it's early. You know, but I, it's, I, it's, 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 it's the breakfast. Right it's the breakfast. Yeah. Everybody's in food coma. Food coma. Okay, gotcha. We're right there, so hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. I got to tell you, you almost got a free shower this morning because I just got done taking a drink of water. And Kim's over here, and she's going. <laughs> I just about lost it. I can remember doing that with kids when, when uh, they were growing up. But when Jesus was on the cross, it looked like he was defeated. And it looked like the enemy had won. Satan and his minions were all rejoicing. They thought, hey, this is great. We won. The Pharisees were thrilled that this radical that came in to to their presence and kind of ruined their their deal they had going on and they had a pretty good deal going on well see he'd been silenced 
and they could return to being the authority for God's laws so they could lord over the people once more themselves. And Jesus had a crown of thorns on his head, nails in his wrists and feet, and he had been beaten with a whip, 39 stripes on his back. And he was placed on a cross and was crucified and left for dead. Now, I want you to understand this morning, and I've said this a couple of times through our Lenten season, that the, the nails and the leather bindings that held his hands and his feet and his legs, see, that's not what kept him on the cross. What kept him on the cross and the reason he went to the cross was love. An absolutely unending love. We call that an agape love. It comes with no strings attached whatsoever. An agape love is a love that is given freely and openly, not that it's deserved, but it's given to you. It's called grace. And so that agape love is what kept him on the cross. Pure love, love that had never been shown anywhere in the world by anyone before. But then something happened. He was placed in the tomb. And he was left for dead. But he got up. He got up. Jesus rose from the grave in all power, majesty, glory, and honor. Jesus arose. He appeared to his disciples. He ascended to heaven. He defeated all of the powers of hell. He is alive today because he got up. We can have everlasting life, find purpose and meaning for our lives here on earth because he got up and because he got up his enemy was defeated underneath our feet because he got up our sins every one of them are totally wiped away and forgiven because he got up we have freedom and victory because he got up he is going to come back and bring us back home to him let's all say it together he got up See, for a lot of people, Easter, like I mentioned before, is just simply a day. It's just another day. It's a day to uh, maybe search for candy or go to the store and buy this overly elaborate, overly expensive basket for the kids with no meaning behind it other than you're going to need to go to the dentist later on. Because, <laughs> you know, kids don't brush their teeth very well. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> She knows. She's, she's still got three young kids at home. She's like, yeah, brush your teeth. <laughs> it's, it's all, you know, and you see the memes on, on social media, you know, it's like, uh, you know, you got two chocolate bunnies talking to one another, and the other one says, I can't hear you. Well, the ears are bit off. But, <laughs> and, and don't get me wrong, I like Cadbury eggs just as much as anybody else. The originals. But, they have absolutely nothing to do in our secular society with what we're doing here today about talking about Jesus getting up. So for a believer in Christ Jesus, it is the reason why we live on this earth. It's a, it's a reason that it took me a little longer than it should have, but I think we all have our own little path that we follow along. And it's that resurrection of Jesus that is the basis for our faith. It brings us hope. We all need that hope. It brings us love. We all want to be loved. And it brings us joy. Because hope and love together bring an unspeakable joy, an unending grace and mercy, and the promise of an everlasting life. You hear it. We say it all the time, but I'm going to say it again. Life ends eternity. Where? Where are you going to spend that everlasting life? You have two choices. I only like one. Choose wisely. Choose, yes, choose wisely. Give me the gold toothbrush. I'll go clean the bathrooms. The words, he is not here, but he is risen, changed the course of history for all mankind, for all time, and they continue to do so today. We 
when you go back home today, I challenge you to read out of the Gospels this story and pay special attention to who finds out first because it's totally countercultural, just as Jesus was. Many people have died spreading the truth about Jesus. One of the kids that, that got me into youth ministry because he wanted a youth group at the church I was at, he went down to Central America, and he went to the village where five missionaries went, and none of them came home because they were killed by those natives. Then the wives went down a few years later, and one of those natives, the native that had killed the, the lead missionary's husband, or the lead missionary, his wife got to meet him. He's a pastor. It was for not. They died for Jesus. Many other religions have mocked our Christian beliefs and continue to do so, even today. And there was a, a breakfast on Friday that Mark and Lori and others got to go to. Uh, you guys were there as well. And you got to listen to a woman who, her name's Carrie, and she is being mocked and, and just torn apart for her Christian beliefs. But you know what? I don't care what the world says. I care what Jesus says. And those wars and all these things that are broken out because of, of this truth about Jesus, it's something that no matter what man does to us, scriptures tell us this, but no, it doesn't matter what men do to me, women do to me, because I have my Jesus. Here's some truth for you this morning. We talked about it. Mark, he got up. We, are, we now know that. But here's, here's some people who didn't get up. Muhammad didn't get up. Confucius didn't get up. They keep saying Buddha. Buddha didn't get up. I don't care what they say. Buddha did not get up. Joseph Smith, he's dead. Jim Jones, he drank the Kool-Aid, he's dead. David Koresh, well, you don't know what happened to him. He was down in Texas. He didn't make it out of that compound alive. But Jesus, Jesus is alive. He's alive. He got up. He arose. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that awesome? It's No other religion can say this. But moreover, it's been about being proved out over the last 2,000 years. Think about this. You have 12 disciples. Granted, one of them betrayed Jesus, so you get to 11. They held on to their, uh, if it was a lie, they held on to it for like 40 years. Go back to Watergate. Those 12 guys, they couldn't even make it three weeks. That is the truth that stands. The resurrection story has been one of the most defining moments in all of human history. It was mentioned in the sermons two weeks ago, and we know this to be true because it's recorded in the documents outside of the Bible, outside of the Jewish community. We know that Jesus lived and died and that he was crucified and he rose through the dead. Even Titus Flavius Josephus, who was a Roman Jewish historian, not a Christian, mentions this as a fact and so he had no stake in that being truthful at all untruthful it is a truth written into history these events did take place so people often ask why was that nearly two thousand or two well it's four thousand pounds two tons stone rolled away and it wasn't simply rolled away because it wasn't sitting right next to the tomb, as some of the pictures show. But it was, as the scripture records, it was a distance away. It was moved a distance by an earthquake, and by it was rolled away by the angel. Well, the stone wasn't rolled away for him to come out. The stone was rolled away so that we could look in. It was rolled away so that the empty tomb could be visible to all. The empty tomb is the greatest evidence of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And critics have tried to explain it away, and they haven't been able to. The empty tomb still stands as evidence that Jesus is not dead. 
He is alive today. Easter means victory. Victory over death. Victory over hell. Victory over the grave. Romans 6, 3 through 5 says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism to death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we've been united with him in death like this, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. And I chose that this morning for the call to worship because this speaks to us in a whole different way than what we are commonly used to at Easter time. It's a different set of words. But it should make you understand what your baptism is about. See, in being baptized, we are partaking in the death of Christ. We are dead to our old self. That's what baptism is all about. That old person goes away. That We are dead to that person. We are raised anew when we come up out of the water or when the water flows over us. We are washed clean by the blood of Jesus and in his resurrection, his living being that he is, when he was raised to life, we too then are raised to life along with Christ. So we are in Christ's likeness as we walk through our lives each and every day. This Easter we can walk in the resurrection power of Jesus. Let's look to the Word of God this morning for more insight into the resurrection of Jesus. And there are three points to make for you to ponder on this morning. So as we go through this, we'll touch on each of those. But first, He is risen as recorded in Matthew. And this comes from Matthew 28, 1 through 8, the New King James Version. Now, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. And the guards shook for him of fear and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. Then you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word. So some important things to note in these passages that were written into history is that A, it was not the disciples who went to check on Jesus. It was Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, the two people who truly honored him. Now understand that women were not counted or allowed to speak in matters of Jewish religion, and yet they are the major players in this story. Jesus' ministry is open to all, regardless of who they are or what their past was. More on that in a moment. B, the stone was nearly 4,000 pounds and it was removed so all the world could see that Jesus had risen from the dead. And it's estimated that it would take four to six men to roll that stone in place. And according to the records, Pilate sent uh, Petronius, the centurion, with soldiers, and they rolled that great stone in place, their words, laid it against the entrance to the sepulcher and sealed it with the Roman governor's seal. The seal could not be removed by anyone without the governor's direct permission, under penalty of death. So if someone wanted to steal the body of Jesus, they had to get past the two outer guards that were stationed there. They had to overcome the two inner guards that were stationed one on each side of the door of the tomb, and very well-trained Roman guards who did not dare leave their station for any reason, again, under penalty of death. 
the stone door is going to be open to you this year, 2023. Are you going to look in? Or are you just going to stand at a distance and wonder? Just walk through and see the blessings of God for your life. Jesus promised that he would rise again. And based on the evidence, that's exactly what he did. Death, hell, and the grave could not hold him down. He got up. He got up. Oh, there we go. Hallelujah. Snoozing. Should have, maybe we should have had breakfast after. <laughs> but he set the example for all to follow. And as he did, we can rise with him on that day when he comes back to take us home with him. As Christians, we must rise above our tests and our trials. We have that same resurrection power dwelling within us right here today. Nothing can hold you back. What Jesus promises, you can bank on that it will come to pass. Do not waver. Do not doubt. Just press on in faith. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene first, as recorded in Matthew. Mark 16, 9 and 11. Now when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. And when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene first because she was sold out for Jesus. She believed that Jesus spoke and supported his ministry. Mary was demon possessed until Jesus showed up and set her free. Jesus was always looking for the most unlikely person that was willing to be used by him to change this world. Does that describe you this morning? Are you ready to follow? Are you ready to answer his call on your life? If you are, Kind of like what the, you see on the signs on the side of the road, buckle up. Because <laughs> Jesus will do amazing things for us. Now, we need to note this. Many were still in unbelief when Mary told them about Jesus. Those who had walked with him daily, who ate with him at the table, who heard him say to them he would die and be raised on the third day, and they still had disbelief. This was not just those people. This was even the religious leaders of the time. They knew the scriptures forward and backwards, inside and out. Yet they still did not believe. And today, we can look out the door and we can see people going, moving around, totally oblivious to the fact that Jesus died for them and was raised on that. many have doubted how many will continue to doubt how many have shied away because you just don't know they want proof they want proof like Thomas you know doubting Thomas you know, not until I see the holes in his hands and the, the hole in his side right they won't believe until they see something like that Thomas was a skeptic who refused to believe until he had a direct personal experience which is in reference to the Gospel of John's depiction of the Apostle Thomas who in John's account refused to believe the resurrected Jesus had appeared to the ten other apostles until he could see it and feel it. How many of us have been there? How many of people out there are still that way? <clears throat> yes. <coughs> Jesus appears to us all. We are called to walk by faith, not by sight. The measure of our belief should outweigh the measure of our doubt. If not, it's time to pray. The great commission that Jesus has given us all to live by 
Matthew 28, 18, New King James Version. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen? Amen. Amen. See, we have authority and power of Jesus, so let's use it. It's like getting a gift and leaving it sitting on a shelf unopened. We have the power. We need to go forth and use it. Our will and our plan must be put aside in order to do His will and His plan for our life. We must do what God has commanded us to do in the Scriptures. See, Jesus got up and He set the example for all of us. We must get up and complete what God has given us to do. Go out and make disciples of all nations, of all peoples. I had to laugh when you mentioned the, the gift, because uh, it's a gift that never stops giving, it never changes, it never spoils, it's always the same. In the news, on my news feed this morning, there was a guy who still has a chocolate Easter egg, and is, he's had it for like 50 years. Yeah. That kind of gift, it goes bad. <laughs> Here's the thing. We have the gift of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't go bad. Amen. It's always good. When Jesus ascended to heaven and took his seat at the right hand of the Father, God sent us a helper, the Holy Spirit, as recorded in the Gospel of John. And I've taken back several weeks when Mark was not feeling well. He, he just, his voice was going out got up here to give the message and we had prayed over him before the service and he got up here and in the power of the Holy Spirit his voice came back and it got loud and it became booming and God's message came forth that is the power of the Holy Spirit that John is speaking of so let's go to John 14 25 and 27 where it says these things I have spoken to you while being present with you but the helper the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you your remembrance all the things I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And to complete that great commission, God sent us the Holy Spirit to live within us. The Holy Spirit is our guide. He is our advocate. He's there advocating with God for us so that we can hear the voice of God in our lives. As believers, we are equipped with the power and authority of Jesus Christ. But we also receive the Holy Spirit to help us get it done for Jesus. Because he got up, he sent us a helper so we could get up out of whatever muck we had gotten ourselves into, whatever our lives were into. Jesus got up, now we can get up. And in Jesus, God has created a mighty work on the cross out of, like Mark said it a little bit ago, it was not nails, it was not leather straps, it was love. We cannot just let it sit idle, waiting for something to happen. The Word tells us to go, not go to church on Sunday or Bible study on Wednesday, but to go out into the world. It takes action. We have to do something about it. That's why we have this church here. I got into my own little bitty bartery after a previous ministry, and I was done with ministry. And then this guy and the, and the other guy showed up and said, uh-uh, God's not done with you yet. You've got things to do. You've got <laughs> actions to take. And we have said it many, many times. He did his part. Now it's up to us to do ours. Get up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 
excited. Yeah. I got excited about it on purpose. <laughs> this year as we celebrate Easter, so let us focus on the life of resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let's act in the power and authority that God has given us to be born again believers. We gave our life over. That life is gone. He gave us new life in him. Let us remember that sin and sickness and disease has been washed away by the blood and the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And let me tell you, no matter how far that you've strayed from God, no matter how long you've been on that wayward path, on that broad road, as the scripture calls it. It's not too late. It's never too late. Because of Jesus Christ's resurrection, you can reach out from where you are today, take the hand of Jesus, and be transformed into his image today. Today. Psalm 119 tells us there's never a mountain too high, there's never a sea too deep, and there's never a place too far that God cannot reach us. What do you think about that? I, I think what, I think we need to say this all together. Hallelujah. He is risen. The empty tomb is just a reminder of who we serve. An awesome God. You got to be careful if I really break out into song. My God is an awesome God. Jesus got up. Jesus is risen. He is alive. Hallelujah. It's time we get up. It's time we get into the race and complete the Great Commission in our lives. We can do it. We have the Holy Spirit to keep us on track to complete the will of God in our lives. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, you have reignited a fire today. Father God, I... Pray that everyone is feeling the Holy Spirit filling them up right now, Father. Preparing them, getting their hearts stirred, prompting their minds to things that they, we can do as we go out, as we go to make disciples everywhere that we go, whether it's in our homes, our schools, at our work. And that no matter what man does to us, Father, we have you. It doesn't matter what the world does to us. Because in the end, we get to spend everlasting and eternal life with you. Father, let those that heard this message today and other messages like it be reignited. Let us, let us shout, hallelujah. Let us shout, he is risen. Let us shout, he got up. Let this absolutely be a reminder of us to go out and serve, and that you, Father, you are an awesome and amazing God, ever-present and always ready to help. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. As we come into this time of communion this morning, I would like to have you pray along with me in silence with the prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another day of life, another day in your presence, dear Lord. We thank you for your son, Jesus, and the sacrifice that he made for us on the cross. Out of love, agape love given for us. Lord, we come before you today and we confess that we are sinners and that we are in need of your grace and mercy. Lord, we repent of our sins today. And we pray that by the power and the blood and the love of Jesus, that we can be redeemed. That we can be reconciled to you. And that we would remember the sacrifice that was made by your son on that cross that paves the way, that opens the door, that rolls away the door and made everlasting life available to us. Lord God, we just praise you and thank you for your, our Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ. And as we partake of communion this morning, let us remember, 
Let us bow down and remember that sacrifice today where he released us from our sin, from our past, from our doubts, from our worries, from our sickness, from our pains. Lord, he released us. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus and the disciples were having a cedar meal, the meal of the Passover with bitters and herbs to remind them of the bitterness that they were in, the bondage they were in before he released them from Egypt out of that bondage. And as such, Jesus was telling them, this body is broken for you, my body is broken for you, to release you from the sins, from the bondage that you are held back from today. So he held the bread up and he said, this is my body that is broken for you. Take and eat. Later on in the meal, he took the cup and he blessed the cup. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. My blood that is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. And as the scriptures remind us, he said that he will not eat again of the bread or drink of the cup until he comes back to take us home with him. Thanks be to God. <coughs> the body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. Thanks be to God. Now we have our time of prayers for people. she would always be out there in the audience and if I was having a bad day I'd just look at Anne because she'd be praising God with her arms high in the, in the air and it was just awesome so it's just wonderful to see you so prayers for the people today and if anybody would like prayer um, just let me know anybody yep yep Demetrius yep um, my, my father's in town Father God, we come to you today with praise and honor for you, went to the cross willingly to suffer for us. You died on the cross and you rose three days later to take away our sins so that those who believe in you will not die but have everlasting life. Psalms 103, 8 and 12. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. This morning, as we come together to pray for those in need, I want to thank you, Jesus, for their lives on this earth. We are your children, O Lord, and we thank you and praise your holy name. Father God, I lift up Terry and Diane Van Wyck's family to you for the loss of Terry's dad, Al. We praise you for Al's life, and we thank you that you have showed us that if we believe in you, we will never die, but have eternal life with you. We ask for peace and comfort for all his family, for we are still human, and we mourn for the loss of our loved ones. Guide them through each day, and let them rest in the power of your love. And we lift up Harold this morning. And we just pray for comfort and healing for him, Lord. 
Let your face shine upon him and give him peace through this trial he is facing. Bind up his shoulder, heal it, for it says you, he says, by your stripes, we are healed in Jesus' name. And we ask this blessing for Harold, Lord God. He is a great man of God, and we just thank you for Harold's life, Lord Jesus. And Father God, please be with Becky and steady her blood pressure. Help her to know that she is loved. And Lord Jesus, we pray for Kim Anthony. We thank you that he has come here to see Kim and her family, and we just praise you for that, and we just ask for safe travels, for he is on his way home today. Just give him safety on the highways and byways, Lord Jesus, and be with him and bring him back again safely. And Father God, we lift up Demetrius, Atlas's son. I lift up all my grandsons, Riley, Dylan, Jace, and Colt. We ask, Father, that you guide these young men throughout their lives. Help them to know they are loved and that you are there for them. Put a hedge of protection around them. Keep them from evil and all harm. Bring them into a right relationship with you, Jesus. We praise and thank you for these young men. Do not ever let them go, Jesus. In this world, they will have troubles, but you have overcome the world, and we praise and thank you for that, my God. You are an ever-present help in times of trouble. You will always be with us until the end of our days. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise for mercies new each day. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done for us. In Jesus' holy and mighty name, amen. As we close out our online portion of our service today, we thank you for joining us today, and we invite you to come back each and every week. Join us in person if you'd like. Uh, come on in and have some breakfast and stuff. It really was good food. That's the one thing about you know churches is, is that we never have too little food, and we always eat too much. So, but was there biscuits and gravy? There was. There was biscuits and gravy. Yeah. There's still a few left just for you, so you can, you can have some. So let's go to God in prayer, shall we, today? Dear God, we come before you today feeling weak and uncertain. We're struggling to find the strength and courage to face the challenges that lie ahead of us. Gracious God, please grant to us the grace and fortitude we need to endure and to overcome those things that seem just larger than life. Help us to trust in your plan. And know that you are walking with us every step of the way. Fill us today full of your strength, your peace. Give us the wisdom to make good decisions. We offer up our struggle to you and ask that you carry us through this difficult time. Heavenly Father, we are in need of your strength and your guidance to help us stay focused on you and not our circumstances. And when we feel over, overwhelmed and overcome and unsure, of how to move forward. Give us the courage to face our fears and the determination to keep going. Help us to trust in your loving presence and know that you are with us always. Fill us full of your peace and your grace and your mercy and give us that wisdom to follow you always and to make those right choices. Let us answer the call that you would send out to Lord, help us to be strong in body and mind and spirit and grant to us the endurance to keep on going, even when all things are so tough. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for releasing us from our past sins and our mistakes. May we be filled with your love and your light. And may we use your strength to serve you and others with kindness and compassion. Most of all, let us show love to all. In your precious and